as long as you can easily verbalize them, it probably does. It, it's going to be easier for you to put in the answer and log in and all of that. And most of those, they don't allow two people to be logged in at the same time. So it's a little cumbersome when I have to log in and put in the answers and then save it when we're done and stuff. Go ahead and start off with the first one. All right, so what we're working on is uh, exponential functions. We just started this unit today. Okay. And log? So, yeah, log, we haven't got to logs yet. I was wondering if we could go over that before we started it, though. Let's do it. Every discussion on exponential functions begins right here. Notice the difference between this and every other function you've looked at that's algebraic. The variable is in the exponent on this. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it exponential. And an example would be 8 equals 2 cubed. Okay, that's an exponential expression. Every exponential expression has an equivalent logarithmic expression. And there's only one thing you need to know or remember. Logs are exponents. So start there always. Logs, that is what a log is, is an exponent. In other words, if y equals b to the x, then the log equals x. Now I just have to figure out where to put the b and the y. Well, the b always goes down there, right? Which means the argument goes there. So these two are identical. One is an exponential expression. The other is the logarithmic expression. So how would I write this equation logarithmically? Uh, log base to uh, log eight of eight. You, of eight. At least that's the way I do it. I'm not sure how your teacher does it, but I pronounce this log base two of eight, eight being the argument, equals three. Okay. okay. So those two are identical. And the secret to this whole section is making sure you can always go back and forth between one or the other. It's huge. You have to be able to go from exponential to logarithmic and from logarithmic to exponential. Notice that we don't really have a way of solving. If I told you that the number six was equal to 2 to some power. Could you solve that? Um, would it be log base 2 of 6 equals x? Now can you solve it using your calculator? In other words, you can't even solve that in your calculator without resorting to logs. Mm -hmm. If, if I gave you that problem and you didn't know how to convert it to logs, you wouldn't be able to solve it. You could spend all day on it and you wouldn't know what x was. x is a number between 2 and 3, but figuring out exactly what it is is very hard. Okay? But once I convert it to logs, now that I can get out of my calculator. There's a change of base rule where if you have the log of some base that, do you have an Inspire or a TI-84? Yeah, 84. Okay, you only have two log keys on the TI-84. You have common log, which is base 10, and you have natural log, that is written this way. And what natural log is, is really it's base E. E being the number that's approximately 2.71. It's like pi, it's irrational, goes on forever. But that's what natural log means. And that's what that key means on your calculator, is base E. Okay, so how would I solve this? Well, log base 2 of 6 is the same as the common log of 6 divided by the common log of 2. So that's what x is. Well, I can get that off my calculator and divide it by that, which I can get off my calculator. You just divide it by the of its base? Yeah. In other words, the change of base rule says that 
whenever you have a base that's not either common log or natural log, then you solve it from your calculator by using the change of base rule. So let me give you another example. If I had log base 3 of 7, that's the same as the log of 7 divided by the log of 3, and oddly enough, it's also the same as the natural log of 7 divided by the natural log of 3. Also happens to be the same as the log base 107 of 7 divided by the log base 107 of 3. In other words, all three of these ratios happen to be the same. All three of those are identical. And you can use whichever one works well for you. In other words, if you're working with a TI-84, you're clearly going to use that one or that one. Mm -hmm. And once you get comfortable with logs, you'll find, especially as you go into calculus, that the natural log is the best one to use. The natural log is the meat and potatoes of calculus. That's why it's so important. That's why they give you a, a full key on your calculator. Most people prefer common log because they like the number 10 better than they like the number E. <laughs> but natural log actually is the better one to use usually when you're using something like that. All right, let's see. Do you have, I know we're only dealing with a half hour here. Do you have some problems that they've started you off with that we can work on? Well, like I said, we haven't got anything on logs yet, but we've, got, um, we've well, gotten more like exponential stuff. Okay, we're we're getting getting some exponential problems. Yeah, well, we're getting logs tomorrow, I think, so. Okay. What do your exponential only problems look like? What are some of those? Use a calculate calculator to evaluate the function at the indicated value okay. of x. And then your function is um, f of x equals 3.4 to the x. Okay, now this you can use your calculator. All right. Oh, excuse me. No, you can't. What are the instructions on this? You can't use your calculator, yeah. It says you can? Yeah, I can. But you don't have any way to solve it without resorting to logs. It, it just... Maybe if they give you various values of x, in other words, if they say, what is f of 2? Value of x. They do? Yeah. Okay. Because if this was the only piece of information that they gave you, f of x is equal to 3.4 to the x power, well, you can't solve that. That's, first of all, there's two variables. That's the same as y equals 3.4 to the x power. Two variables, one equation, no way to solve it. But if they start giving you various powers of x, in other words, if they want f of 2, that's pretty easy to get. They want f of 3, that's easy to get. They want f of 5.7, that's easy to get. You can get all of those off your calculator. Mm -hmm. By just entering that into your calculator. In other words, 3.4 raised to the 5.7 power would give you that value. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? And then your value, the, the value they give you is x equals 6.8. So they want f of 6.8? Well, you, your, um, your function is 3.4. Yeah, 3.4 to the x power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And so when they say evaluate it at 6.8, that's how you write it. In other words, here, let me, let me be a little more specific. If I say f of x is equal to that, and now I say what is f of 6.8, or are they saying f of x equals 6.8? No, they're saying x equals 6.8. Okay. That's what that means is plug in 6.8 for x. So it would be 3.4 to the 6.8 out, whatever number that is. 
That's an awfully big number. <clears throat> and whatever else they may give you, they may say, oh, we'll evaluate it when X is 100. You just plug in whatever is in the parentheses for X. So what would this be equal to? If I said to you, what is F of X plus 1? Well, it would just be 3.4 to x plus 1. Yeah. In other words, whatever is in the parentheses, that's what you plug in for x. Doesn't matter whether it's a number. Doesn't matter whether it's a function. Doesn't matter if it's a complicated function. What if I gave you something like that? Then I just plug that in for x. So it becomes like that. And that's an important thing to remember, especially when you get to calculus. Okay, what else? Doesn't look like we're going to need more than a half an hour. If the only thing we're going to do today is exponentials, um, I'm, I'm tempted to skip ahead of this. Unless you want to finish your exponential problems, that's fine with me. I'm tempted to give you a little bit more of a head start on logs. Uh, I was wondering if we could go over the transformations and then just go to logs. Okay. Tra going over transformations, first of all, that's probably a half an hour subject all by itself. On a, just on exponential functions? Mm, yeah. Transformations are transformations regardless. Let me tell you what I mean. We'll make f of x equal to e to the x. That's a nice exponential function. Have you had e to the x yet? Uh, we looked at it. Well, let's make it simpler still. Let's make it 2 to the x. Okay. Now, there are six transformations you can do. I'm going to list them, and I want you to tell me which one is does what. What does minus f of x do? Is that just an inverse? Here, let me list all of them. You have, I'm going to list all three verticals. We have some number times f of x, and we have f of x plus some number. All three of these are vertical transformations. The reason they're vertical is because the adjustment is outside the function. Okay, we'll go through examples. We'll use this and do each of them. Oh, oh okay, I, I, I got it, actually. But the way to memorize it is really kind of thinking of it as horizontal and vertical. Well, the horizontal reflection is f of minus x inside the function. The horizontal stretch is the multipliers inside the parentheses. And the horizontal shift is the subtraction or addition is inside the parentheses. So this is a vertical reflection. That is a vertical stretch or shrink, depending on whether C is greater than or less than 1. This is a vertical shift. The hardest thing about these transformations is they use three words that all start out with S. Stretch, shrink, and shift. And that really is the hardest thing about remembering them. This is a horizontal reflection, meaning you reflect it over the y-axis. This is a horizontal stretch or shrink. And this is the opposite of the vertical in that if the C is greater than 1, it's a shrink. If the C is between 0 and 1, it's a stretch. Whereas it's the exact opposite for vertical stretches and shrinks. This is a horizontal shift. Okay? So, let's do these. What is this function? What's minus f of x? Wouldn't it just be reflected over the x-axis? So, how does that show up? In other words, if this is my parent function, what is minus f of x? Would it just reflect over the x-axis? So yeah, it would just be negative. What would the function be? It would be, it'd be equal to minus 
minus 2 to the x like that. In other words, I'm just taking the function and sticking a negative sign in front of it. Okay, what is the next one? What would, let's call C the number 3. Well, so it would just be 3 times 2 to the x power. Right, and you would have to write it like that. In other words, you're going to need the parentheses. The 3 is not taken to the x power. It's merely okay. the original function multiplied by 3 outside of the function. Okay? How about the third one? Uh, 2x plus 3. 2 to the x power plus 3 down here on this line, not up there on that line. Mm -hmm. Okay? Horizontal reflection. Um, would it be 2 to the negative x power? Good. Horizontal, let's again make C3. It would be 2 to the 3x power. Yeah. Good. And finally, this one here. Um, 2 to the x minus 3. That's a basic course on your translations and reflections. However, if I wanted to give you a hard one, I would say, what is this? In other words, if I gave you this one down here, you would know that it's the original graph shifted three units to the right. Correct? Horizontally? In other words, that's what a horizontal shift means. Is we're taking our original f of x, whatever that graph looks like, and we're going to just shift it to the right three units. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And so if I start with that, what is that? Is that a vertical, horizontal, and by what? In other words, how would I graph that? I know how to graph uh, 2 to the x. 2 to the x looks like that. How do I graph this? Would that be a horizontal reflection? First off? Yes, but here's the secret. You have to write it like this. And I would have to write it with a negative 3. In other words, I have to rewrite it so that it looks like that. And now I have two things going on. I have a horizontal reflection which I would do first, and then I have a shift horizontally to the right by three units. So these can be a little tricky if you have to figure out how to put the negative sign out front. Notice that by adding the parentheses, and I always have to do that, same thing if you had a problem, we don't need to work with e to the x, although since you're doing uh, those, that's not a bad thing to work with, but another place where it might come in is if, say, say f of x was equal to square root of x. Now, what is this? Same problem, right? Mm -hmm. Well, i got to rewrite that. It's the square root of negative, put in parentheses, x minus 5, in order not to change it. Once I add the parentheses and the negative sign, I want to make sure that I don't change it. That's still 5 minus x. But now I know what that is. That negative tells me it's a horizontal reflection, and that negative 5 tells me that it's also horizontally shifted to the right 5 units. And my bet is that you will get problems like this. It's the nature of your school. They're not going to give you all these easy ones over here on the left. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I mean, I'd be surprised if they did. Although, uh, I'm a little surprised that right in the middle of between exponentials and logarithmic, 
they're doing transformations because as you can see this is a rather large topic you not only have to know what each of these are but you have to be able to take a function and figure out what's happened to it in other words if I gave you that function you have to be able to figure out that that is a negative a horizontal reflection shifted five units to the right mm -hmm. You've got to be able to go both ways, just like almost all math. You have to be able to go from exponential to logarithmic and from logarithmic back to exponential. All right, in seven minutes, let's talk about some really important log properties. The log of two numbers being multiplied together, numbers or variables, is equal to the log of one plus the log of the other. For example, the log of 6, I could write as the log of 2 times 3, which is the log of 2 plus the log of 3. That's what slide rules are based on. That's how a slide rule works. If I'm multiplying 2 times 3, the slide rule has log scales, and you just put one next to the other, and you really are, are adding. So it turns all multiplication problems into addition problems. Okay? There's three super important rules. That's number one. Number two is if you are dividing two numbers. That translates to subtraction. also how a slide rule works. Instead of dividing, you end up subtracting. And finally, the third one is log of a to the b power is equal to b times the log of a. In other words, the log of 3 squared, which would be the log of 9, is also 2 times the log of 3. In other words, that's also equal to the log of 9. Because I could just square it first, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you'll have a variable there. In other words, if I said, what's the log of x squared? Well, that's equal to 2 times the log of x. And you usually do that. It's called an expansion. These three rules right here will allow you to expand and contract all log expressions or equations. Very important for solving log equations. But when you get to logs tomorrow, this is where they're going to start you out, these three rules. Okay. A couple of other things. Um, the log of 1, no matter what the base is, is equal to what? It'd just be 1. 0. Notice that b to the 0th power would have to be equal to 1. But that's true. Any number to the 0th power is equal to 1. So that means that all logs of 1 are equal to 0, whether the base is 10 e or 100 million. The log of 1 is equal to 0. And another one. The log base b of b is always equal to 1. In other words, the log base 2 of 2, well, that would mean that b to the 1 power is equal to b. That's a true statement. So both of these you can get by merely making the translation to exponential. But these five rules are a great start for logs. You could even number them four and five. The three most important are these first three, though. You'll use those in, in all kinds of problems. OK. One other I can think of is the log base b 
of b to the x plus 1 is always the exponent. That's equal to x plus 1, as long as the b's are the same. And why? Because I can take that x plus 1 and put it down in front, right? And then I have the log base b of b is 1, so this expression is always whatever this exponent is. So if you had mm -hmm. the log base 17 of 17 raised to the x squared minus 10, that is equal to x squared minus 10, mm -hmm. as long as I have parentheses like that on the exponent. And there are some simple log rules that will be very useful for you starting tomorrow. All right? Jim, All right. You good to go for tonight? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Talk to you next time. Yeah, you have a good day. You too.